Uh, and welcome to our last session on what the SDGs mean for the insurance um, industry. So we have Andrea Keenan, EVP and Chief Strategy Officer at AM Best, Jordi uh, Santularia from Vida Caixa here in Spain, Philip um, Becker from RNV Insurance in Germany, and Monica uh, from a mapre here in Spain. Um, I only have one slide um, for this um, session. And since we're talking about the SDGs, I thought the best slide to use would be the 17 Sustainable Development Goals. But I just wanted to highlight uh, two things um, on, this, on the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Number one is that um, there's 17, it's tough to remember, uh, but I've summarized this into seven words, which is prosperity for all on a healthy planet. If you really boil down the SDGs, that's what we want to achieve. Prosperity for all on a healthy planet. The other one that I think is very powerful and we shouldn't forget. So whether it's climate or nature, it's all embedded there no poverty, food security, it's all embedded there. But one tenet of the SDGs that we should always bear in mind when it was crafted is the principle of leaving no one behind. And I think that is something that uh, Moira just touched on, on uh, when she thought about the call for inclusion. And I think what we want is, to be, is for sustainability to be applicable across all um, actors in society across all geographies. So here, let's see, we've heard a lot today about resilience, climate change, adaptation and resilience. We touched on the net zero uh, agenda as well as we were going along. We touched about nature positive insurance. We talked about health uh, and sustainability agenda there. So I think this is really the, a really, um, a really good session where things could culminate in terms of what does, uh, how, how can insurers really be a driver of change in terms of achieving the SDG? So let's start local and let's start with uh, Monica uh, beside me here in MAFRE and hear what MAFRE, how MAFRE is using the SDGs in its uh, core business. Thank you, Bart. And uh, thank you, the UNP5, for the invitation. And um, you don't start local because I am the head of a, a sustainability of the group and I'm from Colombia and I represent all of the countries that MAFRE is uh, involved in. So, so one of the, 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 the good things to, to work at MAFRE is, um, is that, that we have inclusion <laughs> as a, in our ADNA. So, so, so one of the, the remarks that I, that of course, that, I, that, that you said in what we can do to achieve the SDGs, what is the role of the insurance in that, in, in play that. Uh, the first thing that comes to my mind is uh, we are all aware that we are in the half of the time to reach the 2030 agenda. And with the last report that the uh, Global Compact launched, we are not in the speed, in the sufficient speed to, to, to reach them. So, so, but the good news is, or, or for me the good news is, in this moment everybody's talking about sustainability. And the thing that we have to change is how we can implement everything that we know, how we can implement the analysis, the research, the things that we are uh, thinking of. You just said that we are the privilege to be in the 1% of the population that have the resources to help others. So one of the invitations that we want to, to do as MAFRE is how we can contribute. We are a social uh, business, because insurance is a social business. Our chairman says that in the first day. So one of the things that we can do is how can we change? As MAFRE, we focus in people, we focus in the society, and we work in more than 28 countries, and we hope 
the contribution uh, through the insurance help those societies to develop not only in the economic way, but in the, in the social way, to, to be well-being, to improve uh, their, their life. One of the things is we, we last year launched a sustainability plan, and we have, of course, working in the ESG, and also in an axis that we call ESG into business, because uh, we believe that, that uh, ESG is not only um, matter for, for, for uh, the, the traditional thing that we, everybody talks that is climate, but we need to include all the people in the organization. We need to, they to, to think about new things, innovation things for, for that. So we launched that uh, sustainability plan, and with that plan we aim to, to reach the development goals of course, we are working in seven of the 17, but we know that working with them, we impact the 17 uh, SGDs. So, so we have, for example, an, a target for uh, gender equality. We have right now a target for uh, reduce our gender pay gap. We have a target with people with disabilities. We want 3.5% of our workforce uh, from people with disabilities. We want to include also in, in a criteria with CSG our providers. So we have a target that 100% of our providers by 2024, and I make a, 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 a key point here, our providers for the, of course, health, health insurance, non-life and uh, life insurance and our main providers uh, be 100% aligned with the ESG, ESG criteria. Of course, we are committed with the 13th uh, development goal, that is the climate change. So we have a, a transition plan, and one of the goals in the transition plan is to be, uh, uh, by 2030, to be neutral. And also, we are developing products and services in different kind of uh, the, the matters of the, the, even though climate, social, and, and, and governance things. And in social, I wanted to make a remark that, that we are not in, in the sustainability plan, because this is a, a conversation that we have with the, uh, with the people in the different light of business. Because always when we think how to include ESG things in, the, in our products, uh, the best thought, or the first thought, uh, excuse me, is to think about mobility, is to think about reforestation, is to think about agriculture, but sometimes we forget how to include or how to think about the communities that are underserved. So we take it to advantage that we are uh, the biggest Latin, uh, Latin American insurance company, and we are in different countries in Latin America, and we try to work and here somebody that we are uh, trying to work with is, is how to include the different kind of, of, um, of a society. So this is all the other uh, um, target that we have. And also, we want to, to, to work in our investment role. Uh, so that's why we have uh, the target to have the 90% of our investment rate with ESG criteria but I stop there and then I can tell you what, what is we are doing with the uh, sustainability development goals and to align the organization to, to, to really reach and help to contribute to them. Thank you, Monica, for giving us a flavor of how MAFRE is being motivated by the SDGs uh, and actually you're starting to have targets. I have a very practical question. So if we focus our, the discussion on the underwriting portfolio, the, your insurance business, how did you and how have you been communicating the SDGs to underwriters and product managers there in terms of, are, are you simply telling them this is our target? Do, do they have incentives to steer towards that? How are you? communicating that and you know there's different lines of insurance and I think it's just good to see how that's cascading in MAFRA. Uh, this is a big effort 
we are, <laughs> this is a big, big effort, a, a big challenge. I think this is a matter of day by day work. Uh, one of the first things, and this is a, a very a important thing, is our chairman is a, the first person in the organization that is committed with this. So that helps us, of course, in the, in, the, in the communication of that. But what we, we are doing? First of, first of all, we are developing a training in the organization because we don't we, we believe that we in the sustainable area are not going to develop the products, but we are going to give them the information to develop the products. We challenge them, for example, in the microinsurance. We have, of course, in MAFRE microinsurance because we are in a Latin American countries and we have and we have uh, non-life and life uh, solutions for microinsurance. But one of the things, for example, what we did with the business is forget what is the, the definition or the regular definition of microinsurance, and we want you to think in how to cover the needs of the population of the of the of, of the people in the in the in their countries. Doesn't mean that you are not going to to develop traditional microinsurance, but we need you to think out of the box. An example of that, I cannot talk a lot of that because of uh, is, is uh, in this moment only on a pilot, but we are working with the favelas in Brazil, trying to think in different pros and in different kind of channels. So we work with them, with the people in the, in the business lines. And another thing that we are doing with them, so, so we ca they, they can think uh, uh, out of the box is uh, having with them an, um, a, a almost two, two half in the month a conversations around net zero targets, around TCFD. We are working with them. There is uh, trying to involve them in the report because the worst thing that happened with a sustainability area is convert only as a report area as an area that only give information, but we need to, to build with them the, and to try to, to understand. And, and, and this is, a, as I said, a big, big effort. And, and it's a, it's a, but when they realize the value of change some certain things in the products, and they see that, that give growth because one of the things and, and uh, that is important in this thing is, is the need to give them a, a, a growth. They need to give them, see the money in the business. Because if the business people doesn't see the money, it's not going to move that faster than if they see the money. This is reality. So it's a combination of um, sharpening the axe, the making sure that the skill set is there for the sustainability and um, showing the money. Uh, I think uh, what you're saying, making it uh, relevant to, to those people who uh, are in the core business and also engaging with um, your stakeholders actively. Good, it's good to have insights. And I know it's, you know, you summarize it briefly, but I'm sure the effort is far more than what you said. Uh, let's stay in Spain and go to Jordi uh, at Vida Kreisha and hear what they have to share in terms of the SDGs uh, as a North Star uh, for your company. Okay, hello, good afternoon everybody. It's, uh, it's an honor, it's a pleasure to be here sharing with the audience how we approach to SDG. Just a brief remark from Vida Kreisha. We are the leading insurance company in Spain. We are a subsidiary of Kreisha Bank and we focus on life insurance and pension plan management. And that is important because we define our strategy on sustainability. We have, uh, we have extensive experience of, uh, on ESG, integrating in the investment. We joined PRI in 2009, and we integrated uh, ESG criteria in, in all our investment. Our approach, our approach here is more in, in value, in reputation, in red lines that we don't want to touch some kind of investment, and then to approach on the, on the and risk management, ESG, and opportunities. But also we have an, an, impact, an impact investment that is part of our portfolio. 
So uh, in order to, to, be key, to be keen to actively in sustainability, three years ago we, we decided to extend sustainability to the rest of activities of the company. So we joined uh, Principal uh, Sustainable Insurance, PSI, and we started the journey doing uh, an assessment materiality. And at the same time, to know exactly which is material for our, for our or key, what is key for our stakeholders. Also, at the same time, we try to identify those SDGs more important to our strategy. So as a conclusion of that analysis, we, we identify three main areas that are, that are important for, our, for us. One is operational, the second one is investment, and the third is insurance. And we identify for them uh, some, some, uh, some activities that could be material on environment and, and, and social, and thus to the SDGs. So based on that, we organize our agenda on, on, on sustainability. First of all, for, for the operations, nowadays we have 800 people in the company. We are proud to preserve the origins of Kafsha Bank mission 100 years ago that is based on retirement. So, and also is in the culture of the, of, in the company that is well reflected in our purpose to innovate, to protect well-being of people. So for that reason, operation will link it, all, which is two SDGs. One of them is SDG 8, this an, this an economic, uh, this an, uh, economic growth, sorry. And we define or we link it to the employees because at the end, we are, we are aware that ethical and responsible conduct, conduct of employees, uh, good conditions, and also talent, both retention and attraction. Uh, the target here is to, to apply best practices. Secondly, we define SDG number five, equal, uh, gender equality, because we are 52% of women on the stage, on the staff, and nowadays 50% of man and, of man and positions. So this is equilibrated. That is good notice also for, for that. W when we move to the investment, we are managing 150 million euros worldwide, but our own behalf, the company, but also for our clients. And we are aware that our investment could have an important impact on SDGs, and the we can mobilize them to a, to, to, to a better economy or a sustainable economy. For that reason, we have chosen SDG number 13 for that, for that area, climate actions. And for the target, we decide to decarbonize our investment portfolio in insurance to be neutral and to be the near zero, sorry, in 2015. Uh, we joined to the Zero Asset Owners Alliance to be sure that we apply in best practices. And for that reason, we also uh, define a target on, um, on climate solution investments and also on minimum engagements on the companies that are more intensive in our portfolio. So when we move finally to the, to the first one, insurance, that is our core business, life insurance, uh, we are through Cachaban branch uh, providing our solution to more than 6 million clients in Spain and Portugal. And we have a 34% market share that is uh, really huge, really relevant, and we have a, an important presence on the retail market. Uh, we are convinced that life insurance is a need. People like to protect themselves, their families, and also uh, they wanted to, 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 to maintain their livelihood for unforeseen events. For that reason, I think uh, our solutions, like pro with products and solutions, provide them resilience and economic stability. And we have choose for that, uh, for that third, third area, the SDG number three, good health and will win. And our target here is putting value what we are doing nowadays, but also exploring new areas when we can offer new solutions and to reduce uh, and, and a secure gap. So in conclusion, we have three main areas, uh, operational, investment, and insurance. And we have defined channels through SDG to, 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 to mobilize them. We have, we have defined clear actions, targets, and a roadmap to, be, uh, to, be, to participate, to achieve the, the 2030 agenda. And finally, we also choose, of course, SDG 17, because we can, we can commit this global commitment alone. Individually, we need, to, we, need, we need to collaborate. Thank you, Jordi. I'm happy that you touch on the asset side of the house also, but because I think it also highlights how uh, the total balance sheet approach to um, sustainability can be employed by an insurance company. So simply being sustainable on underwriting and being irresponsible and unsustainable in investment or the other way around does not really present a coherent picture. And I'm happy that you, you brought that into the picture. I know it's not the focus, but it's important to remind ourselves that uh, the insurance industry has that 
uh, dual role in the balance sheet as insurers and as investors as well. Um, a similar question to, to Monica. I mean, how have you been, uh, this drive for the SEGs, is this, this so, a mandate from the top that was simply cascaded? Or is it also bottom up um, that you know you push to senior management say like, we need to be able to have a strategy on this. How did it evolve in your company? We, we have total support for, for our uh, steering committee, over, over also the board. Uh, that's what, what has explained, it's, a, it's part of a sustainable plan that it has been approved. Not also the plan, completely also the targets with, with the steering committee, also the board. We follow periodically. We have organized the governance in, uh, uh, integrally in the company because otherwise it's difficult to mobilize so much people, yeah, because we are touching all the areas of the people, they need to be involved, and we need the, the support. It's, it's, I think it's, it's fairly to recognize that we want to talk with the people they want it. When, when we talk with an employee, they want it to collaborate. Uh, there are a lot of people that <clears throat> they wanted to contribute, and it, it makes our, easy, our job more easy. And that's, a, that's our reality nowadays. Um, well. Thank you. I think it's um, it's really good to see that there's that uh, it, there's it's being championed um, um, at your company and um, that it's uh, the message is cutting across the organization um, on this agenda. Let's move over to um, to Germany, uh, and we have uh, Philip here from RNV uh, Um uh, a cooperative um, insurer in Germany. Uh, Philip, I love your shoes. Are those SDG shoes? Yeah. Absolutely. All right, you made it. <laughs> That's I'm good. Sorry. I think it has the 17 <laughs> colors of the SDGs, but I think you came ready and prepared for the SDGs, right? Exactly, like a parrot. <laughs> All right, Philip, the floor is yours, <laughs> literally. <laughs> All right, okay. So uh, thank you very much for this very kind introduction, uh, and thank you for those great, valuable, insightful discussions uh, the whole day. Uh, Butch and I were chatting over lunch over what's going happen, going to happen now, and he said, uh, well, make it specific what uh, you are doing with the SDGs and highlight the role of a cooperative insurer, and I'm more than happy uh, to do this. Um, and Actually, to do this, I would like to take you on the journey that RNV Insurance has taken uh, over the last, uh, let's say, three to four years or so since I uh, built up the Department for Sustainability within our insurance. Um, I think uh, the SDGs were really a landmark, so I, I think uh, we, we cannot overestimate the role that the SDGs have. Although what I observed was actually that uh, the SDGs were designed by and for states originally for governments. And uh, what I found at RV Insurance was, so what is our role? Do we have a role? It was neglected that we have a role to play uh, to achieve the SDGs, um, especially talking to those I need um, to, to achieve something. So this was the first reaction. Um, and uh, I think um, as a sustainability manager, as a head of sustainability, you have to be very persistent uh, and uh, over and over again and say, well, it's important, we need to do this. And then you try different approaches, uh, how to make your colleagues familiar with uh, the SDGs or with any sustainability topic. Um, and um, so what we did as a first exercise, this was about three years ago, uh, we, this was really a minor step. We tried to measure how we contribute with our assets under management and with our underwriting portfolio, how we contribute to the SDGs. I'm not talking about impact, I'm just talking about can we map those premiums to certain SDGs? This was the first exercise to make colleagues familiar with the SDGs. So uh, we made a long Excel, we said, okay, uh, the, the, the sub-targets, the targets, and so on and so forth, and then try to measure. Um, and I think this was a really uh, valuable exercise um, because for the first time, um, well, the, 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 the colleagues had to deal with, with the SDGs. Um, and then discussions came up, and, and I want to highlight um, those all. So, of course, we started, so uh, just, um, I, I don't want to do marketing here for RV Insurance because uh, mostly you are not based in Germany, so you can't buy our very <laughs> attractive products. Um, but, but nevertheless, um, I, I, I just to give you, to give you some, some uh, what RV is like. So, uh, we are doing all kinds of business, basically. So, uh, we... Um, 
half of our premiums come from the life insurance business. We have uh, health insurance and also non-life insurance. That is what we are doing um, as a primary insurer, basically in Germany and a bit of Italy. And we are also doing business globally as a reinsurer in the non-life uh, sector. Uh, and we are one of the uh, largest uh, asset managers uh, in, in Germany among the insurers. Um, and so then, of course, we started with SDG1, uh, no poverty. And we said, OK, yeah, life insurance helps uh, to avoid poverty. Yeah? But then we said, OK, uh, how is the level of poverty defined? It's not defined as uh, a German poverty level, but it's a global poverty level, so $1.5. So, and this would be cynical to say, OK, we contribute to that SDG uh, because we have life insurance and we provide life insurance. So we said, OK, we don't, don't count this. On the other hand, there's a relative poverty level. Yeah? And we also have underserved groups. We have, for example, we have the problem with um, the protection gap, especially among women, yeah? uh, due to maternity leave, due to lower income levels. And there is a group we can target, and we serve them. So um, this is one of the things uh, we realized, or the colleagues realized, really, what we are doing over there. Um, then for SDG 3, it was a bit easier because we said, OK, health insurance, we are a big health insurance provider. And once again, now the, the new process started to think about, yeah, well, how can we improve on that? And we heard in the previous uh, session uh, about uh, mental illness. Uh, I want to add something. Uh, care for the elderly. Uh, this is very, very important. Uh, we have, uh, you heard it before, a, a, dem a demographic uh, problem coming. Yeah? And, um, and this really served as an inspiration for our colleagues afterwards. Uh, so they said, OK, how can we, for example, cope with uh, loneliness? So most elderly feel lonely, and how can we cope with this? If your parents get sick and need care, um, uh, what, how, to, how to approach this? You were never in the situation before as a, as a child or as a, as a close uh, family member. Um, and um, how, do we, how can we help? Uh, what are your rights? What do you get from the government? What do you get from the state? How do you find a place in, in some kind of uh, home? Yeah? Um, so this was really an inspiration for the colleagues. Yeah? Um, then with, with SDG, it was a bit easier because um, we come from the agriculture sector um, and um, those, let's say, farmers, they are very familiar with uh, renewable energies. Um, they know PVs, they know biogas, um, uh, they know uh, windmills. So uh, we had some kind of footprint there. Uh, we are the largest insurer of uh, those uh, renewable energies uh, in, in Germany. Um, still... And, and there, along the way, there come things that, that um, yeah, are some kind of a problem because uh, we had high claims in the biogas uh, um, plants, and so we had to shut it down or had to reduce and no new coverage, uh, but still we try to see how, how, it's, how it's working. Um, if we come then to, uh, for example, um, SDG 11, um, this is... Uh, Sustainable cities and communities. <laughs> Good that it's there. <laughs> um, um, these, of course, uh, as, as you might be aware, um, there was a huge flood um, uh, two years ago in the, in the western part of Germany. It cost the uh, German insurance industry about 11, bi uh, 11 billion uh, euros. Um, and there, um, one thing is, and, and we were, we had really pay the, the major amount of that because it was covered in our policies, uh, which was not the case and many other insurers. Uh, so we had, and we have a strong regional uh, footprint. Um, so we, we covered that. And I think another aspect that is important over there is looking at the whole value chain. So prevention is the best thing to do. Um, and the second uh, best thing to do is doing a very good claims management uh, so that this damage will not happen again. Um, and that is now our role. And involving stakeholders over there. For example, politicians. Yeah, very important. Uh, where are you allowed to, to build your house and where not? Um, and um, so this relates, of course, to, to, the next, um, to the next SDG, so doing responsible claims management. So to conclude all that, I think that is, that is the road we have taken. Um, the, the SDGs are uh, really valuable. Um, I think three steps were important. First, the clarification. So what, uh, what, is, what is the approach to take? Because uh, even those colleagues that want to engage, um, they don't know how to do it. And that was you, Monica, uh, said earlier. Um, this is very important. Um, the, the second thing is inspiration. 
the SDGs provide inspiration, and the last thing is they provide alignment, so aligning with larger society. Uh, and so I'm very happy that those SDGs are there. Thank you, uh, and you uh, stay true to our conversation to be concrete. Uh, so German efficiency and effectiveness <laughs> in action. Um, thank you for that, uh, Philip. I have one question for you, and I think I know as um, as the head of sustainability, you you said you need to be a pest, basically, right? You need to be persistent and resilient uh, in embedding sustainability. But does it? Has it helped you that RNV is a cooperative insurer? Because I've always thought personally that the um, uh, values of cooperatives and mutuals are, you know, quite aligned with the goals of sustainability, where your owners are your policyholders, right? Um, did it did it help? Even though I know it's been challenging, did it help that you are, you have those cooperative values? Um, I would say yes, yes and no. Um, so uh, if you, for, for most colleagues that join RNV, they don't know actually about this cooperative uh, um, um, business. Um, and if, so the longer they are with RNV, they, uh, they really are proud of this, this, uh, th those values. Um, and, um, but most link it to that we have a profit orientation, but not maximization, though this is what we are proud of. And if you look at our combined ratios, uh, this holds true, unfortunately, at least from my point of view. Um, and um, so um, I, I think I, I, would, I would rather see the SDGs as an enabler to, to get a new spirit into this very old traditional system because uh, one of our founding fathers uh, spiritually died 200 years, 200 years ago, and you need to refresh this somehow. And I think the SDGs are a great lever to um, renew those values. Yeah? Thank you. All right, let's move over to Andrea Keenan, who made it in time. Did you come from the US just now, or no? Or no, I came from, of all places, Monte Carlo. Sorry? Monte Carlo. Oh, right, OK. I see. <laughs> OK. But not anyway, doing what you're thinking I'm doing. All right. Anyway, AM Bass is based in the US, and they're in, in New Jersey, right? Yeah. yeah. And they are a rating agency. They only rate insurance companies, right? So I'm actually keen to hear <laughs> what Andrea has to say about this agenda and wh what AMS has got to do with uh, the SDG agenda and how you are uh, using it uh, or not. Yes, <laughs> yes. sure, uh, excellent, excellent point. I'm not a sustainability officer, I'm a strategy officer of a, of a ratings agency. So we had to really look at this. It was part of my um, initiative to join the PSI uh, and make AMBES a signatory to it. And, it, and, we, and we had internal groups talking about that and, and deciding that it was a really good fit for us because we are focused on insurance. So this sustainability, the idea that insurance is there to touch millions of people, this idea of micro-insurance, which I'm on the board of the micro-insurance network. So um, the, this idea that in insurance is that one product that can take technology and innovation and education and bring it to millions of people with unbelievable speed. So in insurance is, and in the mutual space, uh, this is true this too, insurance is a way to protect, to create value, to move people generations forward. And, and so we share the general same sentiments that are expressed with the SDGs, but SDGs is not something that's in the vocabulary of 99% of the people that work at my company and certainly not in the American insurance industry. So I'm also, as an American. What? <laughs> Are you kidding us? I am a, <laughs> a foreigner in my own land. So, um, so I actually, to just refresh you know, each of the SDGs, I went and looked at an access to insurance initiative report and, and looked at you know, the, the way things are matched, and it's all consistent with, with what we see and with what I believe, which is that there's a lack of data, and it's a little bit of a, a chicken and egg scenario where there's a lack of coverage where there's lack of data, but then there's a lack of data where there's lack of coverage, so it's very difficult to get that together, and an insurance industry in general has difficulty capturing how to protect against a risk it doesn't understand. So that was something that was uh, in that report. 
but also um, obviously protecting, uh, you know, building resilience, protecting against that which is um, the unknown. And the SDGs really aren't written in a way that to me screams insurance, but at the same time, uh, it you could take any one of them and apply insurance to it. So it's both uh, very logical, but very difficult to grasp, which is why I appreciate the German concreteness um, because it's it's very helpful to, to nail that down. Um, and then as far as my uh, AMBEST in particular, we are insurance specialists. We are American uh, from, we're 125 years old. We rate probably 95% of American insurance capacity, but we are the largest rating agency globally, you know, that specializes in insurance. And the reason I was in Monte Carlo is because um, that's where the global reinsurers meet every year for the rendezvous. Yeah. Um, and I think you would find interesting, I brought a little show and tell. They give out um, dailies, you know, the, the, the various publications give out dailies and they've got headlines at the front. It might be, you know, oh, Vestu collapsed and, and what are we gonna do about that and lines of credit. Um, what are we going to do about, uh, you know, what's happening with the pricing of reinsurance? But on the front page of, of this one yesterday was anti-ESG, versus climate activism, how carriers can navigate a culture war. So for that to be on the cover of a daily that's sitting at Rendezvous, uh, I thought said a lot, and I thought it was really excellent that I was coming here <laughs> to share what the sentiment's going on. And, and what's so- I, the, What's the synopsis of that? The synopsis is that insurers truly, is particularly out of Europe, but even you know in the United States and elsewhere, insurers truly do believe in what it means to be good and protecting and in what their customers want. And if you look at the websites of any insurer in the US or elsewhere, they'll talk about the communities they're protecting, the, the good things they're doing, the, the energy they're saving, and the decisions they're making for the responsibility of their communities. But it's become a weapon in American politics, and the term ESG has become just toxic. So now everyone's talking about sustainability, and that's the term that actually allows them to thread the needle and get there. I mean, the the net zero, there's still adherence to net zero principles, just avoiding the, the litigiousness of um, fighting against it for antitrust reasons or whatever. And and what I saw with this is, you know, there's this, there's this uh, from the European insurers, I see this call to action. Um, we really need to do something about this and move forward as a community. Um, what I see from American insurers isn't necessarily incompatible with that, but it's more about fairness, um, justice, uh, equality, and sustainability that we can do within our own communities. So it's not outreach, it's more inward looking, is just my observation on the back of that. So as far as my company and, and what I am best, I can share this with you, but uh, the, as far as what, what we do is, you know, we care so much about the insurance industry because we specialize in it. Uh, we have to know everything we can about it. There's, that's how you are when you're a niche player up against S&P and Moody's and these, these large global players that, that work in so many industries. So we know and care about microinsurance deeply and uh, sustainability and the purpose of insurance. And we seek to provide information to insurers so that our industry can be the very best it can be. And I will say being privately held, as strange as that can be sometimes, um, being privately held for over a century, it's also a blessing in that we don't have that growth motive, that quarterly growth motive. I don't have to come up with uh, you know, whatever the popular product is, we can come out with what we absolutely, with great deal of integrity, believe is the right thing. So we're signatories, we, we believe in all of this, we're not gonna walk necessarily lockstep with everything um, the world is doing, but we, will, we are trying to balance what our clients are dealing with in a very difficult environment, particularly in the states, um, versus what is the right thing to do. I mean, insurance is does know how to handle risk of all types and does know how to handle governance of all types. So um, I think we have a good message and I believe that we have an instrument through which we can convey that message on behalf of the industry. Thank you. So in a practical way, um, all of these things um, right now, does that reflect in AM best ratings somehow, or you're still figuring that out? 
I would think that somehow or another, um, I could draw a map that, that does that. And, and we do, in all of our reports where we rate a company, disclose what the ESG efforts of that company are. So public companies obviously disclose that stuff. And some of them get ESG ratings. I know Sustainalytics is around here somewhere. Um, so, so they'll get ESG ratings. But these are private companies. We rate so, much, so many private companies. And we'll say, this is, this is what's going on. And so it, through information, we'll, we'll pass that out. We, we won't necessarily make a judgment, this is good, bad, or indifferent, that what your beliefs are. But if it's um, important to, uh, you know, obviously they're taking in um, helping their community, it's gonna be helpful for their brand. It's gonna augment their brand, which is good for their, good for their rating. Um, being able to see what's going on in the future and certainly understanding the climate risks that are coming into the future. And my goodness, of course, climate risks are something that, that the insurance industry knows about. All of that is considered as far as um, what they need to, uh, con what, what we talk about in ratings meetings. We don't assign a score to it, but it's discussed as part of the, the rating meeting, which is a very important part of our interaction with our clients. Thank you. Um... Also for the news from Monte Carlo, and I hope you'll be in the Baden-Baden conference uh, uh, next month, which is the annual gathering of reinsurers where uh, a lot of these uh, mainstream discussions are happening. And I can assure you sustainability will be a topic there as well. Um, I just wanted to check in the room before I uh, probe uh, the panel further uh, with tough questions. Uh, any, uh, any question from the audience? Kind of introduce yourself. Um. Thank you. Salvador Doncel from Optimus Capital Partners. Uh, about SDG 13 and specifically uh, climate change adaptation, uh, society uh, in general and youth taxonomy in particular is asking you, uh, insurers and reinsurers, uh, for products that substantially, substantially sorry, contribute to climate change adaptation. Uh, what's your take on this? What are your initiatives about uh, developing these necessary products? Okay. Uh, Deepak from Vitality. Thank you for sharing your thoughts. Some really great comments there. Um, so, so I mean, this is a shift towards more stakeholder capitalism, doing good in the world, uh, which is brilliant. Um, but does it create trade-off scenarios whereby shareholders will be impacted and how do organizations, I can see a wry smile there. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, I mean, it, it, you know, it's a topical issue. How do you see markets, companies, and other stakeholders kind of reacting to that? All right, so who wants to take the climate adaptation um, question? Uh, I, I could start. Okay. Okay, uh, one of the things that we are doing that is you, you, you ask is um, uh, in our investment role, we are trying to develop different kind of uh, partnership. For example, we have a partnership with Abedrola. You have a joint venture there to develop uh, technology and to develop new uh, fields of uh, s solar panels and photovoltaic uh, technologies. So we can improve the new uh, energies. Another thing that we are doing is an, uh, an, um, uh, development, uh, and we just uh, launched the form of uh, biomethane and uh, the, the good part of that is not only the development of, of green energy, but also the social impact that we have there. We, we are planning to, to, to build 25 plants, and for that plants, we are going to, to, to develop or to uh, 25 uh, em direct employees' uh, jobs for, for each plant, and also 250 uh, indirect uh, jobs for that. So this is one kind of the things that we are doing for for um, for adaptation in the in the in the investment in the investment part. 
just to, just to complement for, for, the, for the product side, uh, as FDR, we classify eight, eight and nine products. So at the beginning, and now where, where we have nowadays, uh, we define a different percentage of uh, uh, sustainability percentage on the, on the investments. We at the minimum of 5%, 50% for the more compromise, and nearly 100% for the Article 9. So it's inside this, this percentage when we define uh, a commitment on, on, on climate change, on adaptation. Usually, we, we, our approach nowadays is, is a little bit more abroad. We, we accept, uh, we accept uh, green bonds with the IGMA criteria as a standards as a part of this percentage. But obviously, with, with, with time to time, we, we, we will move to, to particular to adaptation projects that, that will be interesting for us. Also for, also, for the balance sheet, with the decarbonization or net zero settlements alliance framework, we have a minimum commitment on, on, on investments. We have a, a billion euros that we wanted to invest on, on climate solutions. And nowadays, we accept also uh, IGMA, IGMA strategy or IGMA green bonds in, inside the balances that fits with, with our purpose. So this is our approach nowadays. And taxonomy, taxonomy, it's, it's, a, little bit, it's a little bit earlier for, for, for us because our approach is, is, is globally. We invest in uh, UCD companies, mainly in, in Europe and US. And the taxonomy didn't give us enough information, at least we don't have enough data to, to have a clear conclusion on that. We need to wait a little bit to, to compromise a minimum taxonomy alignment uh, on our products because we, before we need to test it uh, and to manage and to, to integrate it internally. Thank you. And anyone who wants to answer the question from Deepak on um, uh, any potential trade-offs and um, the agenda of stakeholder, capitalism, shareholder, Engagement. I, I, yeah. I can, yeah, sorry. <laughs> Go for it. So, so I'll give, I mean, as a ratings agency, of course, we're we are, you know that. So thank you for the question. Um, but uh, I, we think about it a lot. Um, there's so many pressures on the uh, on insurance companies. Of course, they've got their policyholders and their their owners, uh, shareholders of whatever type, whatever structure. If it's mutual, that's going to have that's one and the same. If it's um, Stock held, it's another thing. If it's private equity, oh my goodness, you know, there's a, there's a whole thing there. So there, there's difficulty. Um, and speaking, you know, it's good, primarily speaking on behalf of the, the American insurers on this case is they're just, they're struggling. Um, they're, they're, you know, there are companies that have dedicated, uh, you know, the, set, the second bottom line where there's this cause associated with what they're doing and then they got backlash for it and had to withdraw. So there's these, um, looking at the ownership structure, looking at share, uh, shareholder value, and then looking at the fact that what companies are doing is trying to do what would in a traditional economic model be what the government is doing. And the government in trying to maybe force the hand of what companies are doing so that they can you know, report on these things um, are asking for more reporting, more data, more, more thresholds. And then on the back of that, as uh, these things get expensive, insurers have to raise their prices to be actuarially sound with these decisions. So then voters get angry, and these same policyholders who, who were asking for one thing are now getting quiet. So giant mess of, of stakeholders in this. And I, I, but I do believe that there is um, a positive attitude toward these causes. Um, all you have to do is look at, I, I, I think it's possible that climate change might be the thing that gets everybody straight and, and has shareholders thinking, you know, it, we're not going to have assets tomorrow if we are paying, if we're too short-sighted with the assets we're valuing today. And shareholders of various types are starting to get become aligned with these government causes. So that's you know, an acknowledgement of the pressures, but just my observation and, and my hope of, of how this will play out. I could just add a, a personal note uh, on that. Um, RV is a limited company, but we are not publicly listed. So uh, this is, as, as you said, this is a huge advantage because we can plan over the longer horizon and we are owned by a bank, so we are part of a banking conglomerate uh, and ultimately by the German cooperative banks and we all share the same values and now this is really advantage uh, having that. Uh, but just a, a personal, personal opinion on that, 
the thing I really underestimated when I, uh, when I became uh, head of sustainability or sustainability manager is how much you need to communicate and with all kinds of stakeholders and aligning all those interests and you can't always align those. Uh, but this is really something I, I really uh, I, I also underst underestimated um, uh, how much you need to communicate. And this even starts with in your own company. <laughs> I'm not talking about rating agencies, uh, shareholders, uh, NGOs, and so on and so forth. Thank you. Um, I have another question for you in the last six minutes. Um, I wanted to have your view on, on something that will advance the agenda, uh, specifically um, on underwriting portfolios. Um, I think a lot of the things that we've seen evolve over the years, um, without getting lost in semantics, whether you use ESG sustainability or what have you, have largely and still in many cases been qualitative rather than quantitative. So this idea of steering portfolios um, where you know, the summation of, of contracts and policies that you write could actively contribute to the SDGs. How are you, is that a strategy for you as a company that of course there's qualitative um, um, assessment, but ultimately you need to be able to have more metrics around it? Um, and, and there could also be uh, trade-offs, right? Um, so I think what I've seen so far has been very binary, right? So um, SDG uh, two, zero hunger. So in a very uh, traditional way, you'll just say, let's count all our agriculture insurance policies and that's SDG two. But how, what if that, um, enables unsustainable farming practices? What if there's uh, human rights or child labor things there? It, is that counted in the, in the way you see the sustainability criteria or not? So if you get what I mean, it's, so how do we make it more holistic in a way where you have different dimensions of sustainability, the economic, the social, and the environmental part uh, being captured in the way insurers really Pro, probe and assess the sustainability um, of their business. Who wants to start? It's easy. I wait for, for life insurance. Maybe it's better to, to start for non-life. Yeah. Have you prefer? I don't know. Who wants to go? Well, in life insurance, if you want. Okay. <laughs> First of all, I think it's important that uh, we are, uh, we are uh, in the group, we are the factory, no? uh, and the distributor, distributor is, is Cashabank. So at the end, this kind of controls that who is coming in the, comp in the offices on the branch and contract our product, this kind of control is, is coming from, from Cashabank. But from the side, from our life insurance, for the, the jobs we, are, we have nowadays, uh, I need to recognize that the state of art is, is really incipient. Uh, bio how, bio how climate change could affect to biometric risk. We have, we have working together on that in PSI, in a group, working group, in a guide, and we conclude that uh, qualitatively we, we perceive that is a risk. Uh, is a risk in, in, in catastrophic, is a risk in transition, is a risk in, even in, in social issue. But we are not able to, to quantify nowadays, uh, and we, we need to start it. Uh, how, can, how can affect mortality, longevity, morbidity, and, and hospitalization? We have, we detect that there is something there, but we, we are not possible to, to, to analyze, because the approach that we have in, in, in underwriting, it's really statistically, and so they need data to quantify, to price them. Um, how can we afford that? It's, it's we, we go a step back, and we say, well, we, we are going to define what means a vulnerable collective, uh, in, well, what means vulnerability, and we agree on that with, with the bank because we wanted to have a, an agreement on, on that position. It's a vulnerable client for the bank, so it's a vulnerable client for us in Bidakasha. The second stage for us is to identify which one of them are nowadays on the world portfolio, which one of them are nowadays uh, our clients. And finally, the third stage is it's possible to create new solutions to achieve those that 
they are in the society, but not in the in the in the portfolio or our clients. So this is where we are going to approach to to the underwriting and try to see if we can accept it. Uh, is, is well, we we are working in, on these three stages. Okay. Um, okay. If if uh, I recall your question, that how can we see the underwriting role not only. Uh, to giving pros to each SGD, but more holistic uh, approach. We are we are uh, t uh, working with our uh, clients and analyze what are they doing. Not not only what we give to them to the coverage, but what are they doing in terms of sustainability? What are they doing in terms of the SGDs? So we analyze if, for example, we are going to give an insurance if they are. Uh, 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 taking care about the human rights, they are taking care about their employees, they are a sustainable uh, company. So it's not only to give them the insurance uh, products, it's the way that we can uh, encourage a new conversations with them that try to 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 develop it in uh, with them their transition plan try to understand where they are uh, in the different locations for example we 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 know that we have for example an an um, and a call centers, and we understand that the some of the locations are not the 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 geographies that is the human rights respect but we we, can we can uh, uh, analyze that? Can we can ex, uh, exclude or, or include the, the clients of that? So there is an analysis, there is an engagement with the with the client. I think we we need to to see the sustainability not as a product. We need to see the sustainability as a process, and we need to to start doing things. This is one of the the. The thing that we are talking with our clients, we, we are now in the materiality assessment, and we are uh, talking with different kind of clients and trying to 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 understand them and try to build with them solutions. I think this is not a matter with a, an insurance company and not a matter with a oil company that I, uh, is a very high emitted sector and we know that we have exclusions uh, policies but it's not matter of exclusion it's a matter is how how is the speed to need every sector to develop how the speed uh, and how we can help from the insurance sector to to develop that thank you i think what you're saying monica is it's there's been a journey it's a journey to get to up to that and we're taking that steps towards that journey um, as we go along right and uh, I've seen myself an evolution in this space over the past years. And before it was about you know planting trees uh, as part of CSR through the foundation. And it's, it doesn't mean it's not important, but it is important. In fact, but now we're talking about underwriting people, and you know we were expecting that it would be. Uh, it won't be smooth sailing, especially as you go deeper into the core. And the core of the insurance business is really, if you sum, uh, sum it up, to underwriting. And that's where the rubber hits the road, and I think you can't be as core as that. And I think on the investment side, insure, I always say that insurers are investors because they are insurers. It's not the other way around. Um, so I think the core of underwriting is really essential, and I think we're getting there um, um, step by step. Um, Philip? Is it you now? <laughs> oh, no. I, I you didn't want to add a final shot? A final shot, yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so I, I think what, what you just said is, is very important. Uh, so I, I feel that we're now coming to uh, the, the reason why we are there, the raison d'etre uh, that, that insurance companies have. Uh, and I um, always say I want sustainability to be integrated in, in any function within the company. And um, if I should be not necessary uh, anymore, that's perfectly fine. So that would be the greatest achievement uh, I in, in my life. To make your 
role redundant. That's what you're Absolutely. saying. Absolutely. Right? My, making my role redundant uh, and going to Monte Carlo and Baden Baden just for holidays. <laughs> <laughs> Shove your shoes. Okay. <laughs> Andrea? Uh. <laughs> sure. I, I'd say that look at the whole value chain. I mean, we've got three wonderful insurers here, but, and, uh, you know, the uh, rating agencies in the value chain, the MGAs, the agents, the universities, the capital markets, um, risk managers, there's all, there's all the way down the line, there's a role to be played. Uh, what what we try to do is inform. That's the one thing we, we have. We don't have the reach of an insurance company, but we do have the ear of others in the value chain. So we open dialogues when I get opportunities among my um, various constituents. I will pull them together and, and debate issues. And ultimately, this, the steps move in what I think this group would call the right direction. But it, it is about communication um, to the earlier point that it starts from inside and it gets more complex when you go outside of your own organization. So it's um, encouraging and enabling communication information sharing. Thank you. And my final thoughts would be, uh, one, I think if there's something that I've learned in this process of, over the years, it's trying to understand what is ultimately the impact we want to have. So one can say that whatever jargon you want to use or not use, whether it's ESG or sustainability, you can view like these as input to a process or activity that could lead to outcomes. These are outcomes. No poverty, zero hunger, stable climate. I think no one would dispute an outcome like that. So I think if you view sustainability as an outcome of everything that you do, I think that would not be controversial. I mean, who wants to have poverty? <laughs> who wants to? Uh, but, so I think it's, um, it's, it's been very helpful. Um, secondly, um, I think another thing that has struck me along the sustainable insurance journey is that um, nothing that matters in this world comes easy. Um, so I think um, you know that you're in the right direction actually when it's a little bit rocky. And finally, I'll end with an American saying to give everyone a boost at the end of the day, which is when the going gets tough, the tough get going. So with that, we'd like to end the session today on uh, sustainable insurance. Also, those of you who have stayed have earned your sustainable insurance certification. Uh, and there's more to come uh, in the coming months um, and years. So this will not go away. We will continue to progress uh, on this agenda. And um, thank you to all of you for staying on with us. Thank you to um, our very gracious host in Spain for hosting us here. Um, in, in Madrid, and we hope this will not be the last one um, in Spain. Uh, we expect to go to other parts of Spain as well. Um, the South, um, Galicia, Barcelona. Rioja. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Where the parties. All right, exactly. Granada. Okay, so I think there's, it's a beautiful country, and I think for those of you who've been here, I hope you get a chance to enjoy the, the culture, the people, the food, <laughs> and the hospitality. Thank you so much to all of you, and thank you for your support. Thank you. Thank you.